uh, our guest is Tom Ospa. Tom, I'm getting a little uh, funky stuff from your microphone. I'm going to have to fix that cable uh, while uh, we go to a commercial break. So Matt's going to switch the other microphone just to uh, move his uh, microphone down to move the other. Just switch the microphones out there. Yeah, just slide one out, slide one in. There we go. That happens intermittently. Not really sure why. And just <laughs> take those headphones off and get them out of the way. No, yours, yours are fine. Just take the ones that are on the mic stand and just get them out of the way. There you go. This is this is kind of like a, a military operation, right? Right before you're getting ready to go out the door, you know, something goes on with your equipment, and uh, so it's we, we got foobard. <laughs> we did, we did, but uh, hey, we adapt and overcome, right? That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Mission must go on. Move on your feet, baby. That's right. That's well, welcome right. back to the studio. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me, Rob. It's a beautiful day in the Panhandle. Happy to be mm-hmm. here. Lovely day the Lord has made for us, huh? Indeed. Um, before we get into some of the political things, I, I want to acknowledge that you've been through some personal tragedy uh, yourself. You were telling us before the break and some things that I learned last week hadn't uh, heard before, but uh, our deepest condolences to you, Tom. Yeah, I, th- I appreciate that, Rob. We were um, just for the listeners, we were just talking uh, uh, before the break. My, my son passed on from cancer last year. Uh, we, it was a, a nine year battle. Um, and, uh, uh, so he, he was a real inspiration. He, incredible young man. The, the most amazing thing about him, he, he never complained over nine years. You know, we were, we, we had you know, at least 15 surgeries. I lost count mm-hmm. and, uh, chemotherapy through the years. And, but he always kept a positive attitude. Um, and he, and he was a real inspiration, um, and I, I don't know if you want to talk about uh, the, the aviation program. I was or... going to, yes. Let me introduce I was speaking mm-hmm. to President Mary Hendricks yesterday, and she says the same thing about your son. He was a real inspiration to so many people. Uh, Mary's husband, Chuck, is, is a pilot, and I thank you. Your son and Chuck bonded. Uh, and But Mary said that the fact that he never complained, he was always positive, mm-hmm. he never let his personal illness not feeling bad get in the way so uh she so she thinks that the aviation program being named in honor of your son was most appropriate so yeah 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 that was um that, that was an incredible honor um mary called me you know shortly after hunter passed and and let me know that they were uh thinking to name the the aviation the aviation program at shepherd after hunter and uh i mean wow it was it was you know i was overcome with emotion frankly um, just at, at the honor, but the the story there is uh, one of our good friends, Bill Farrell. You know, knew Hunter was going through a rough spell uh, after some chemo, and um, he just needed a uh, his spirits were low. He needed to pick me up, and so Bill um, coordinated with uh, one of his friends, Steve, who has an airplane down at the at the uh, airport here in Martinsburg. And so Steve took Hunter up, and and Hunter just came back. I mean, his eyes were just lit up. You know how when your spirit swells and your eyes are just bright, that's how he was, and he was smiling. And he said, Dad, you know, I think I really um, I like this flying, and um, I think I'd like to do this. And I said, you think you want to, you know, fly again or get your, you know, pilot's license? And he said, no, I, I think I'd like to do this for a career. And so, um, uh, and so, you know, he went up with Steve again. Um, it was very generous. And then Chuck and Mary found out, uh, because we were looking for an aviation program for him to to go, you know, study in college, and we heard that Shepard was was thinking about creating one, and so I told Mary, hey, we want to be the first student in line, you know, we want to support Shepard, we want to do Shepard Aviation, and so we started moving in that direction, um, and so Hunter uh, trained as much as he could. He was flying with Pete down there at, at uh, Bravo, at the airport, and he and Pete, um, Pete's an old Air Force guy. Um, uh, true hero vet and uh, Chuck same deal so Hunter really got close to Pete and Chuck and you know two former Air Force pilots and um, enjoyed it and he you know he kept it up as long as his strength allowed for it uh, had every intention you know if if, um, if if he had been healed he would have he would be in the Shepherd Aviation program right now you know on his way uh, to graduation and so um, our family was was truly honored that um, you know that Shepherd named their aviation program after Hunter and and now um, I'm on the board, and I'm, we're, we're trying to recruit as many young people in the Panhandle and the area. If, if you're interested in aviation, just hey, Shepherd has an aviation program now, and um, please please reach out and and um, come on board. We're we're looking for students. 
Okay. And shifting to you, you're a lawyer, and I understand you'll be t- teaching an aviation law course at Shepherd. Is that correct? Yeah, they <laughs> they uh, they got me on board for mm-hmm. for teaching aviation law, um, and uh, it should be fun. I've, I've I haven't uh, I haven't taught at the university level before, but um, uh, people tell me I'm a a, a decent. Um, I can explain ideas fairly well because I, I learned a couple languages along the way um, just through the military experience in, in um, special forces because special forces soldiers have to speak uh, foreign language. So in, in that process, I got pretty good at, because I had difficulty understanding so many times, mm-hmm. I got pretty good at being able to put myself in the other person's shoes and understand what they were getting and what they weren't getting and, and how to speak in a manner that they could get it. Sure. And so hopefully that will translate. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Lord help me. So. <laughs> yeah. Tom, uh, I'm sure a lot of people remember you from your run for governor a few years back. But uh, just in case, Senate. give us a... Was it governor or Senate? I know you ran for Senate. Did it you was know? U.S. Senate. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, my, yeah. My, yeah, my mistake. Okay. Uh, maybe you could, uh, once again, just brief people on your background. I know you hinted about it a little bit earlier. So uh, just in general about me... Yes. Um, you know, I guess the, the, the thing that, that folks seem to be interested in, uh, 23 years in the West Virginia National Guard, um, U.S. Army, Special Forces Green Beret. Uh, started off enlisted and um, then went went to the dark side on the officer side, so I had to go through Special Forces training twice, actually, um, as, a, as a Special Forces engineer and then, a, and then an SF officer. Um, it, it, like Bill said, I am, I'm an attorney. I own a law firm in town called Glenlock Legal. I do real estate, title and closings, um, settlements, um, and uh, um, family man married to amazing woman Sarah, who puts up with me, and and uh, uh, four kids. Hunter's in heaven now, but we still have three. Uh, um, our oldest just started college, and um, we've got a two-year-old and a six-year-old that that keep me young. So a lot of spread. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. And and now you've decided to run for office again, and you're going for state senate, the seat currently held by Craig Blair, who's the Senate president. That's correct. Yep, um, we, we 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 spent some time, you know, talking to folks. I, we literally had, you know, this last cycle, uh, no exaggeration. Our, you know, we had folks call for literally every office. Um, you know, everybody had a had a plan for Tom Willis to run for this <laughs> office or that office, and uh, you know, I, and I joke, you know, none of these invitations came with a two million dollar check to, you know, to fund the campaign. So, um, you know, we we feel like we we feel called uh, to this arena. And I've been in serving my country uh, for 23 years in uniform. I feel like God created me to defend that which is good. And so I've done that in the military. Now uh, it's time to transition to the uh, political arena. And I, and I don't want to say as a politician, I want to say as a statesman, because the difference is um, governing based on principle um, as opposed to you know, special interest or lobbyist dollars. And so my hope is to bring integrity to this office, um, leadership to this office, to be present in our community uh, during this, this, my term in this office, and, and, and mainly just to lead based on principle. Because, um, you know, honestly, you know, financially, it's a losing proposition for me um, to take time off and go down to the state house um, uh, from my, you know, job working at, as an attorney. But... Um, but, you know, we don't do it for the dollars. We do it to serve our, our fellow men. You only live once. And, you know, if you don't, uh, if you don't do what you're called to do, then you're, you're not really living your full life. Do you feel those qualities are lacking in the current office holder? You mentioned bringing uh, in- integrity and presence uh, and, and such uh, back to, uh, to this office here. Yeah, that's a good question. I think the, the voters in the 15th Senate District will have to decide for themselves, you know, if they're satisfied um, with whichever candidate is up. But uh, for my part, you know, I, I plan to lead with integrity and I plan to be very present in the community and I plan to lead by principle. And um, that's that's all I can say for my part. Is there, you, you specifically you're taking on the Senate president here and was a leadership position in Berkeley County, the Eastern Panhandle has waited a long time to get those leadership positions, but you're challenging it to knock it out. And clearly, if you're elected, you're not gonna be immediately installed as the Senate president. So you're asking the people of this county and, and the, the, all, the, all the surrounding area to fire the person who's in that position and replace them potentially 
with you? Why should they fire that person? Well, I think that <clears throat> I'm very confident in my leadership ability, Rob. So, so uh, I get it that uh, that's an important issue, and then let's let's address it squarely. Um, the, the the question I would have though is, uh, you know, do, do the citizens in the Eastern Panhandle feel like you know, Charleston has finally started really paying attention to us. Um, the folks I talk to say, you know, n not necessarily. And so that's one thing. The other thing is, you know, y you have to judge the quality of the leader that you're talking about. And so, yes, you know, I'm not going to come in as a Senate president, obviously, um, but I, w I will lead. That's for sure, because wherever I go, I lead. That's just that's just how I'm made. Um, it's the same, you know, as a lieutenant colonel in the West Virginia Army National Guard. It's the same, you know, starting a business and running a firm, you know, with employees from several different states. Um, so I'm a leader, and that's what the voters are going to get. And, um, and let me talk about this. We're talking about more than just uh, leading, you know, in, in, in this district or at the state house. We're really, we're really, as a nation, we're really in a struggle right now, and we need leaders. We need leaders in this struggle. We're, we're seeing a resurgence of Marxism across the country. It's got different names, right? It's got woke, you know, wokeism or you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, all these things. It's just Marxism recycled. Marxism failed in our country on, on economic principles because um, the free market system works too well here. So now they've recycled it on uh, racial principles. So the Marxists are trying to separate us based on race, and uh, they, they've, they've made substantial gains. And even though this ideology has failed miserably 100 years ago and led to 100 million deaths last century, it's making a resurgence in our country. And so we need the leaders uh, to, to stand against this tide, and we need leaders that can speak the truth, but, but in a persuasive manner, speak the truth in love, because we've got to persuade the younger generation. And so uh, serving in the West Virginia legislature, I think that we can, we can uh, do that in our state, but the country's gonna be looking at us too. And I think West Virginia can lead the country on this issue among others. Bill. Yeah, uh, uh, why running for the Senate, and by the way, an observation, you've never mentioned the incumbent by name. Uh, you've mentioned the office, but you've never mentioned Craig Blair by name. Uh, is that intentional or just a an approach you, you chose to follow? Well, the, the the name that's important to me for this Senate race in the 15th state Senate district is Tom Willis. Okay. You know, I think Tom Willis is the, the guy that's, that can lead best, and Tom Willis is the guy that's going to win this race. Okay. Why the Senate as opposed to delegate? Um, <clears throat> I think that uh, uh, this the I know Michael Height yes. uh, personally, and um, you know I I look I look where I can do the greatest good. I mean, honestly, in an ideal world, you wouldn't really have to think about politics. You could just run your business, you know, earn your income, serve in your church, go to you know football games on Friday, watch the games on the weekend. In, in an ideal world, right? But we don't live in an ideal world. And so you have to look at what office, where you can make the most difference. And uh, we, we looked at all the different offices. Like I said, we literally had invitations for, I mean, even, I mean, even uh, the, the Berkeley County Circuit Court judge. I mean, somebody met with me, me last week to try to recruit me for that. So literally, so we, we looked at the gamut and we said, where can we serve uh, to make the most difference? And, and this is, this is you know, what we came up with, the West Virginia 15th State Senate 15th District. Yeah. Uh Recent, traditionally, uh, the Republicans have been running on physical responsibility and uh, infrastructure uh, uh, issues. More, uh, more recently, there's been a group that have chosen to run on what I call cultural issues. And I gather the fact you mentioned woke, ESG, and the like, uh, that the cultural aspect is is important to you. Well, there. There's several, there, there's three things that are really important to me. One is it's ridiculous that we're 50 in the state and in education. And when I announced last week, I talked about that, you know, that first of all, we need a culture of excellence in West Virginia. That should be unacceptable. And frankly, there should be, you know, we should be marching in the streets over that ranking. Um, that, so, but it takes a leader to establish a culture and it takes a leader to establish a culture of excellence. You know, the, the, that's something I can do. The, when I talk to my friends who are teachers, and, I, and I've got several here in the Eastern Panhandle, 
you know, they, they, they tell me there's a, a, an extreme administrative burden on them. They've, they have more government forms to, to fill out than you can shake a stick at. And so I think we need to take, take a close look on, you know, take easing the burden on teachers. And, and similarly, um, you know, the, the, the ultimate authority in a child's life is the parents. That's a sacred authority given by God to parents. Um, we'll talk about this under the, you know, the cultural wars. But in West Virginia, we need to eliminate any barriers to parental choice. So they have homeschool, they've got private school, they've got charter school, they've got public school. You know, it's the parents' choice where they want to send their kids, and we need to make sure that we facilitate that and eliminate barriers to that. But just like we need to eliminate the administrative burden on teachers, we need to we need to reduce it on our business owners as well. And uh, I just have you know one quick example. So I have I have a couple businesses in West Virginia, and I help as an attorney. I help people form businesses in different states. So I have a very close look at, you know, the, the, the business life cycle, how to form it, how to operate it, how complicated it is in different states. Um, we're not the worst state, but we're not the best. Uh, we can improve. Uh, one quick example, you know, for, as a West Virginia business owner, I need three number, I mean, four numbers from four different agencies to operate my business. You know, is there really a reason we can't just have one number? Because then you go out to, you know, fill out an insurance form or do this and, you know, they need this number. Well, shoot, I left that in, you know, I left that at home. And now, <laughs> now I lost a day. And now, you know, multiply that by a couple businesses. And now you're talking about, you know, several, you know, dozen man hours per year, per year of inefficiency times all the business owners. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money if you calculate it. So we need to help our business owners, um, small, medium. That's where the jobs come from, right? So that we, it gives our citizen jobs and it creates wealth for our state. And then lastly on the, you know, Bill, you mentioned the, the woke. So right across our border in uh, Montgomery County, a judge just ruled that parents do not have the option to pull their kids out of sex education when there's objection material that the parents disagree with. Uh, that's the state seizing authority from the parents. That's a sacred realm the state has ventured into. So this, this is wokeism, right? This is, wokeism is essentially government godism. So we worship the state, the state will solve our problems but the state has a th ultimate authority over you in return. That's that's what wokeism really ultimately ends with, statism or government godism. Loudoun County, you saw last year, you know, a young girl raped in the bathroom by a boy dressed as a girl, allowed to go into the bathroom according to school policy. The parents show up, you know, the dad shows up, they're, the full weight of the law comes down on their neck, they're labeled as terrorists, um, prosecuted. I mean, it's, it's absurd. So you just have parents trying to defend their rights to govern the, their kids' lives which again is a sacred area. So, so this, so why does it matter? Because, uh, the state is constantly creeping to increase its power, increase its wealth at the expense of its citizens. And so that's why I say we need to govern by principle to constantly push the state down and control it to maintain our personal freedoms. But yet the state is Republican. If the state was Democrat, I would, I could yield more to what you're saying, but the state's been firmly in Republican hands for the last several years. So are you saying that woke is being promoted by the Republicans? No, absolutely not. I'm, I'm saying now's not the time to be complacent. You know, let, let's okay. keep advancing. And mm -hmm. I think that West Virginia could be a city on a hill and a beacon of freedom. So we've made great progress and, you know, thank goodness we're, you know, we're, we're not governed by wokeism here. Um, and that's a blessing. We should be thankful. And I am, but, uh, there's there's still room for improvement in you know, some of the things I just talked about and we need to make sure that you know we still man that wall and uh, we make sure it doesn't not come across our borders and uh, we can serve as an example for the rest of the country Matt Miller uh, Tom earlier we had uh, Barbara Fuller on who is uh, a candidate for uh, the 98th uh, delegate district she talked about money that was given to form energy and then not maybe being pleased with how finances have been handled in Charleston what are your thoughts on on the the surpluses and how our legislature has gone about handling those yeah I think that's one of the reasons I'm running uh, I was a little bit disappointed that uh, the the surpluses, in my opinion, should be pushed back to the taxpayers. Um, that's not for uh, elected officials to divvy out on boondoggles um, to claim legislative victories. I mean, the, the taxes belong to the taxpayers. It does not belong to the legislature or the legis you know, individual legislature. So uh, when you talk about deals like Form Energy um, you know, or uh, bailing out some of the universities, you know, this is why you really need to look at higher, or electing 
uh, representatives that have wisdom and that have character, right? Because some of these com some of these issues are very complex, right? So everybody wants jobs to come into our state. Absolutely, we all want jobs to come into our states. But uh, what are the strings attached? So, for example, with Form Energy, every job that was created uh, cost uh, the West Virginia taxpayers four hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Well, how many of the legislatures actually know how to run a calculation? Uh, net present value to see if that's a good investment. You know, what's our return on investment for that, right? Now, that's just the financial side. You know, Form Energy has uh, uh, job fairs in Pittsburgh. So we're the, what, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer. I draft contracts all the time to make sure that people can't cheat, right? It's a, it's a square deal. Well, did anybody in the legislature think to put a, anything in the deal that said, um, you know, this number of people need to be from West Virginia? and they need to be hired for this many years. Just go down to uh, the industrial park over in Jeff Jefferson County. There's a huge industrial warehouse there, 60,000 square feet or something. Um, there was a company out of uh, Texas. As soon as their tax break ended at the 10 year mark, uh, which costs, you know, costs the taxpayers a lot of money, that tax break ended at 10 years, they popped smoke and were gone. So somebody didn't have enough wisdom to negotiate the deal so that they couldn't exit like that. So, you know, so that's what I'm saying. I, I bring the business background, I bring the legal background, um, and, and we talked about, I have, I have a lot of life experience uh, to understand that a lot of these issues are very complex. You know, there's good arguments on both sides, um, but it takes wisdom to, to navigate that path so that it's a square deal and the voters of West Virginia get the best benefit, you know, for their tax dollar. You, you mentioned uh, Jefferson County leaving. Uh, I can give you three or four examples in Berkeley County where they have not left. Quad Graphics one, Mace is another one. So there's a whole series of them. So I think it's a, a, probably a mistake to use one in Jefferson County as emblematic of what all the others are going to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and, and again, I'm not saying I'm not saying that they all leave yeah. by any means. I'm just saying that we need to make sure we negotiate sure. for the yeah. best interest yeah. of the taxpayers. Yeah. Point well taken. Yeah. Tom, the uh, the issues with Form Energy are fascinating because depending on what side you are on on Form Energy, uh, people make a compelling case in either direction uh, for that. And we've explored that deal with a lot of detail and spent a lot of time doing it during the legislative session. Uh, I'll rattle some deals off locally and uh, you tell me if you, you know, comment on them one way or the other. Maybe how you, if you were in the legislature or the county commission or whatever, how you'd have voted. Procter & Gamble, for instance. And let me set this up by saying I'm not in favor of getting any corporation, any owner of a football team money mm -hmm. to build a stadium or a business. I, would, I wouldn't give a penny of a taxpayer's dollars to do that. However, that said, every state around me does. So if I don't, I've got no chance of bringing these businesses into my state to keep my people in my state, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. That said, how would you have voted on Procter & Gamble? Yeah, so I, I mean, just to, be, just to be transparent, Rob, I don't know all the financial details of the Procter & Gamble deal, you know, what was traded back and forth. Um, I'm with you. You have to take a close look at what other states are doing. Again, this is where wisdom comes into play. Um, and I'm in favor of being competitive, right? I think the, the main thing that we can do is establish a business climate that's leading the country, because right now we rank 49th in business friendliness. So we need, to, we need to establish a business climate so that the rules and regulations are attractive to businesses. We need to invest in infrastructure so they've got the, the transportation, the streets, the water, the sewer, you know, the power that they need, the, the, the IT, you know, the communications. Um, so that's, that's the first step. Now, if we need to sweeten the pot, you know, with, with tax incentives or whatnot, I'm not opposed to that. Um, I'm, I'm a deal maker. I love to, you know, I, I love to get deals done. We're, we're, I'm doing a deal, uh, development deal here um, uh, locally, and we've got several other investment deals going. One of my first businesses was venture capital. So I am absolutely a deal maker, but uh, it's got to be good for West Virginia. It's got to be good for the citizens of West Virginia. Um, I'm delighted to have Procter & Gamble in our community. I mean, it's a tremendous employer. Um, I love the programs at Blue Ridge. You know, kids can come right out of high school, work for six months, and go straight to the line and make 50 grand a year. It's a tremendous opportunity for kids, especially especially kids who, you know, for whatever reason, don't want to sit through four years of college in, in the classroom. Um, so I'm in favor of it. I'm, I'm the most pro-business guy you'll ever meet, and I'm a deal maker. My only point is 
let's just be smart about it. You know, let's just let's 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 just be smart about it. Let's come up with wins for the taxpayers. Tom, we are out of time. Thank you so much for yours. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, guys. I always enjoy it. How do Thanks, people Tom. find out more about your campaign for state senate? TomWillis.com. Um, we're still creating our infrastructure. We have a lot of volunteers and donors coming in, so be patient with us. But TomWillis.com, you can find out more. Appreciate Thanks, Tom. It. Yep. Thanks, Appreciate Tom. you guys. Nine oh two.